Welcome to A Conversation with History. I'm Harry Chrysler of the Institute of International Studies. Our guest today is Shikashi Toyoshima, who is a distinguished biophysicist and professor at the Institute of Molecular and Cellular Biosciences at the University of Tokyo in Japan. He is the 2008 Hitchcock Lecturer on the Berkeley campus. Dr. Toyoshima, welcome to Berkeley. Thank you. Where were you born and raised? Oh, um, I was born in a small city in Akita. It's the uh, northern part of Akita, and it's a rather rural part. And so if you ask uh, some Japanese, where is Akita located? Some of them perhaps may not be able to answer. <laughs> and was this a rural area? <laughs> yeah, rural, or yeah, rural yeah. area. Yeah. And, and looking back, how do you think your parents shaped your thinking about the world? Speaking about the world. Yeah. Well, the world of science, the world of uh, the world. <laughs> <laughs> That's a difficult thing. Yeah. Yeah, particularly if you live in uh, a small town and uh, so there's a chance to expose to uh, uh, outside world. But uh, sort of my kindergarten was uh, sort of my, uh, administrated by a German priest, uh -huh. <laughs> a Catholic priest. So, uh, well, in a way, I, I sort of exposed to outside world. But uh, yeah, little chances for <laughs> uh, the, uh, if you grow up in a small town in the rural area in Japan. Your your mother was a school teacher. Yeah, right. And, and what did she teach? Well. Uh, how do you say? Uh, uh, econo housekeeping. <laughs> uh, economics. Economics? No, no, no. no, no, no. no, no, no oh, no. Uh, housekeeping. Yeah, okay. Home managing. Yeah. It's uh, maybe just uh, quite specific to Japanese uh, teaching school. So, and, and how many siblings did you have? How many? Uh, uh, brothers and sisters? Oh, yeah. Uh, I have a one bro elder brother. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and your mother, uh, I gather, uh, worked with you in, in exposing you and your brother to science? Oh, you know, eh? Because uh, <laughs> sort of home managing thing is a mixture of many kinds. Not really science, but uh, you know, in your everyday life, you need to know many things, and some requires like, technology, and some requires sciences. So, if you want to uh, make your so home home life more uh, sort of efficient or uh, uh, sort of well ordered, perhaps you should know. Uh, about sciences and technologies. So, uh, so in a way, she sort of introduced me to science and technologies. Yes. So, so, but but this is interesting because uh, you, you're suggesting that what she was teaching uh, involved kind of understanding of different processes, which sort of come together in the home oh, yeah, and require right. yeah, man <laughs> right. management. Right. And, and you and, and your brother made a lot of uh, models and, and worked with, with toys uh, to, <laughs> to develop new kinds of toys and so on? Oh, yeah. That's uh, how, kind of my hobby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, uh, in my so, days, uh, it, it is quite fashionable to make uh, plastic models. It's, uh, sort of, it's, it's consists of uh, uh, parts. Plastic parts. It's so if you glue and make, uh, say, plane or ships and those things. But then, just uh, gluing things is not not so inter becomes not so interesting. Mm -hmm. So uh, I sort of switch to cut the wood myself and and what do you say? Uh, uh, yeah, polishing the surfaces and painting and that. That kind of thing I did myself. So your youth made you comfortable with being in the workshop, so to speak, oh, working right. with tools. Right. Uh, and and did you do your own designs also, or were you following plans that were available? Well, sometimes you have to sort of uh, make your design because of the parts or the tools you have is very much limited. So, of course, you have to do your, your design. And that's perhaps some incorporated, some electronical things. And, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's painting is quite interesting. And yeah, the cutting things, you need your hands. Yeah, <laughs> right. so, so, so hands-on. 
Right. In, yeah. in addition to using the mind, and 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 what 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 as a young person, what what subjects excited you in school? Was it always science and math from day one? No. <laughs> 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 well, so the elementary school children, uh, yeah, just going outside to do sports. <laughs> <laughs> do sports. Oh, okay. So, so uh, that, that's that's interesting. Maybe baseball or something so, like that. So you're suggesting that a scientist has to be well-rounded, actually, uh, in their yeah. their preparation. Yeah, right, right, definitely. Yeah. And uh, he, he, so he, he or she has to be exposed to many things. That there yeah, helps. And and although this was a small town, you you had you 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 say that you you had a very good education as yeah, a young person right, before you right. went to college. Yes, I don't really know uh, why I could I could get such a good education, but uh, this elementary school system was unusual at, at that time in Japan, and so. Uh, uh, in the Japanese system, one teacher sort of takes care of everything. But in that uh, elementary school, uh, specialized teachers uh, hmm. are available, and they teach uh, sciences, mathematics, and so they are very sort of interested in uh, bringing up students to a good level and to, to make them interested in they teach. Yeah. Uh, and and so, uh, where did you do your undergraduate work? Undergraduate work, uh, it's in the University of Tokyo, and then I went to uh, graduate school at the University of Tokyo. So. Mm. And as an undergraduate, uh, they, they had you had many choices before you. I, I think I read somewhere that you even considered going into literature. Oh, that's before going to a university. I but, see. Yeah. So, in li so, so you were interested <laughs> in literature before you went to college. All right. And, and why, do you, why did you do, finally decide uh, to go the route of science and not go the route of being a doctor? My, uh, my brother went to medical school, Lady Anna. We, I thought it's not necessary to be a medical doctor. You don't need two medical doctors <laughs> in the family. <laughs> I see. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I also so I thought that, uh, uh, say, being a novelist or a philosopher, you need a special thing, special ability. But uh, doing science is, well, you may be able to do it. <laughs> Just uh, reason sort of normal abilities. And and <laughs> but what but 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 literature was a possibility. I mean, right. you 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 right. were attracted to that as a young person. Right. So what, what, but was, it, was it that once you were an undergraduate, you know, science was just fascinating? I think I was quite good at uh, literature and uh, physics in, in high school. And I was not so good at the mathematics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so uh, uh, the good thing about, uh, 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 yeah, the, yeah, I sort of liked uh, literature. That makes me to write uh, quite good <laughs> uh, uh, sort of writing style, mm -hmm. for example. And also gives you that you have to think quite logically, mm -hmm. not just the just a feeling. So yeah, I like the kind of philosophy things. And in, so really, that really requires you to think logically. And that helps your thinking also in scientifically. Of course, you use some language, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. To think about. So that makes you, uh, yeah, quite logical. Yeah, I would say. You're you're <laughs> you're you're suggesting that your education really uh, prepared you uh, in different fields. Uh, that all contributed to the field you finally Definitely, went into. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. It's very helpful. <laughs> and and did at, as an undergraduate, you you majored in physics, but I, as I understand it, you were very eclectic. You 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 didn't want to stay just in one subject and, for example, be a physics student. Yeah, mm -hmm. certainly. Uh, I I was very much interested in biology things and. 
uh, also my my sort of elder brother was wanted to be a medical doctor, so he, sort of he brought uh, sort of uh, biology information to sort of my interest. I yes, see. Yeah. And the reason I sort of ch ch I chose the physics department is uh, you have to uh, learn physics first. Mm -hmm. Then, if you study biology, perhaps you will have a better sort of understanding of the biological things. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, yeah, from the start point, I sort of I thought I would like to do finally to biology field. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and your work has, has combined the two. Now, uh, I at the university and then in graduate school, did you have mentors in the sciences who, who essentially helped you move along in a particular you know, direction once you knew <laughs> that you were interested in both biology and physics? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, you have a chance to do uh, summertime experiments in, in, in the undergraduate school. And so I was, I don't remember why I sort of, I thought of that uh, project, but uh, uh, it's a, a hardware simulation of uh, nerve excitation. It's so using so-called tunnel diode. And so I went to, uh, uh, yeah, one laboratory, and there, because uh, uh, new scientist just came back from England, and so he, he sort of showed me how to do the experiments. And at that, in that in laboratory, I sort of exposed to a structure study, mm -hmm. and so uh, I sort of uh, fascinated about it because mm -hmm. you. St you know, the protein has a certain structure. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> you have to know how it looks like, at least, and mm -hmm. how it changes the structures. And you can see it. Yeah. <laughs> by, uh, yeah. So that uh, so, sort of uh, uh, sort of introduction to a structure of biology, really. So, so and, and it was uh, Professor Wakab. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Who, who exposed you to sort of thinking about the images so that you could see the structure. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, right. And uh, so, so this was a real apprenticeship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Really, it is. <laughs> and, and he, I, I gather, he had studied in Cambridge. So, right. so you, you, you were moving beyond the provincial village and, and, and really... Uh, 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 sort of being exposed to the newest technologies uh, that were, were coming from all over the world, in a way, that, yeah, you know, you, right. using you know what was uh, uh, what was available. Uh, let, let's talk a little about being a scientist and mm -hmm. what are the skills involved. Uh, you talked a little about what your how your background prepared you, but but uh, w what what is involved in doing the kind of work you do on, in a skill basis. Uh, in addition to knowing the biology and knowing the physics, mm -hmm. uh, uh, work style and so on. Work style, yeah. Uh, 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 do, do, do you have to, you, you must behave, have to focus to, to stay with a problem and have patience. What else? Uh -huh. <laughs> what else? <laughs> well, <clears throat> well, yeah. To do a good science, I think uh, you need to have uh, some skills uh, other people don't have. Right? Mm -hmm. And in my case, uh, I think uh, it was very helpful to uh, have uh, sort of hobby electronics. Mm -hmm. at, uh, I'm hobby sorry, hobby? Hobby electronic things. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So having worked with these electronic models that yet yeah, from, from right. an early right, age, right, yeah. Right, right. So, yeah. So uh, in, in, in doing a good experiment, the subtle sort of small tools is very important, actually. Mm -hmm. So b by being able to make such a tools, much sort of simplify and accelerate your uh, studies sometimes. And also that allows you to uh, think uh, kind of new method, or if you uh, need it. And 
So, uh, expo yeah, so that sort of expand your thinking. So, That's very so, important. so, yeah, so, yeah. so uh, I, because at one level you're working on a theoretical level. Mm -hmm. you, you've learned the literature, you know the physics, you know the problems, you've studied under people who are looking at interesting problems mm -hmm. that interest you. But, but you're saying an important dimension is being able to manipulate the technology or take it to a new level. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and all of this has to come together. Yeah. So you can find a new technology, then, yeah, maybe you have a whole new field. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, so we, the, the word multitasking seems like it applies, that, that you're able to, to see many roads that you might go down simultaneously, in a way. Yeah, sometimes you have to do, right? Not, not the, uh, yeah, you are sort of forced to do so. Uh, in my case, uh, <coughs> Uh, the first uh, crystals I got of uh, calcium ATPs that I really working on for 20 years or more, more nearly, and <coughs> that the crystal is very thin, and so too thin, <laughs> and nobody sort of uh, has the technology to get the structure information from it. So the there were different approaches, mm -hmm. of course. So. Uh, if uh, the two, sort of two, uh, actually three sort of methods I could think of at that time, um, because that's a very thin three-dimensional crystal, mm -hmm. if you make it thinner, then and just one layer, two layers, maybe you can uh, get the structure information by electron microscopy, right? And <coughs> if you can make it big enough for X-ray, then <coughs> you can do a standard X-ray crystallography. But uh, it may be possible to develop a new technology to analyze uh, that, those thin stacks of three deep crystals. And so I tried three of them. That's quite fitted to me, <laughs> mm -hmm. because I sort of like developing technology. And yeah, and <clears throat> so uh, that helps to solve the final goal, all the things sort of give you uh, sort of uh, com com yeah, help to converge. And so uh, I s sort of, I could not really make thin enough, but I could e extract uh, information from e electron microscopy and also uh, make it a bit thicker and just enough for X-ray crystallography. And so uh, <coughs> all those things, the converge and got me a uh, sort of true uh, sort of uh, solution of the structure. So, so let, mm. let's help our audience understand it. So what you're saying is you, you come along, you're interested in uh, protein and uh, the importance of calcium. We'll talk about that yeah. in a minute. And, mm. But on the technical side, uh, what was already there were three ways of trying to see yeah. uh, 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 what, what is going on in the cellular process. Now, mm -hmm. uh, so the, 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 the first uh, question that comes to mind is why, why is it important to see? In other words, because seeing the picture will give you clues about the process. Is of that course, it? Right. Of course, <coughs> the protein it changes its structure. Uh, to achieve its functions. So uh, ah, I see. structure is uh, so really the basis of understanding things. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, that, that, that's very important. So, so seeing will show you the structure. If you can find a way to see beyond the human eye or the technologies that are just there, then uh, you will be able to watch structure over time. And by seeing the change in the structure, you can understand the process. Yeah, that's a basic idea. But that was really a dream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, but, uh, <clears throat> yeah. So the big thing, uh, big advancement was made when I sort of could see uh, different structures in, uh, in you know, the action cycles. And, and, but it's interesting. It, yeah. you, you had to be comfortable yeah. as a technician right. uh, yourself in the sense that you had to know 
what each could do, what electro, uh, the electronic microscope could do, what uh, crystallography could do, right. uh, and uh, uh, whatever, well, I don't recall what the third uh, element in this was, but, but you had to know what they could do but not be trapped by the limits of what they could do, right? Because if you, you just to know the limit, of course. yeah, you, you you had to know the limits. Yeah. So mm -hmm. so uh, so uh, it, it was by being comfortable with the technology, seeing the limits, but knowing that you wanted to go beyond the limits. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, that's right. <clears throat> and yeah, to to me, it's uh, sort of a uh, ability to get good uh, good experiments. It's to think of uh, alternatives. Mm -hmm. So there are many ways to approach the goal, right? Mm -hmm. And if your knowledge of the technology is wide enough, or well, you can sort of uh, find a new way to reach the goal, that's even better, perhaps. And that could may uh, uh, open you a whole new field. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But <clears throat> uh, and and uh, the the the. The problem set here, let, let's talk a little about what was the substantive thing that you wanted to look at. So, mm -hmm. so you want to look at, as I understand it, and I'm not a scientist, you wanted to look at uh, uh, how the muscle takes the signal from the brain mm -hmm. to take an action and, mm -hmm. and what, what, how, how the signals are translated into a process so the muscle does what the brain wants to do. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a uh, wide scope, yes. Yes, okay. But I'm sort of, the fact I'm working is really a tiny bit of that uh, process. Uh, yeah, so that's, um, that, uh, that sort of uh, transmission of information from brain to ideal muscle requires uh, movement ions, in my case. So, and how these, those ions are actually controlled is my interest right, mm -hmm. right now. Right. right. And, 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 so, and, and th this is happening where on the surface of the muscle or in the cells of the muscle? I, I excuse my uh, right, right. layman uh, <laughs> uh, uh, lack of knowledge, but, but I want to explicate this because it's very fascinating. Well, the calcium is everywhere, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Perhaps you, if you hear the calcium, perhaps you immediately think of your bones and teeth. But it's, there are a small amount of calcium used for regulations of many processes. And you said yesterday mm -hmm. that I think 1,400 grams of calcium in the body, and then how much are used for the, the processes that are, you are interested in? Uh, Ten. Ten percent. No, no. Ten grams. Ten, ten grams. Okay. Or less. Or less. <laughs> Very small. And, mm. and, and the, the function here is what? In other words, what, uh, what is the function that calcium is, is undertaking in, in the problems that you are interested in? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, the direct sort of uh, relationship is uh, the calcium has to bind to a so-called muscle thin filament to uh, muscle to contract. Right. And then, of course, the muscle has to be relaxed, mm -hmm. and then this calcium have to go back to or pumped back to the original uh, positions. Original sort of. Uh, it's it's actually a vesicular system. So I pump back into the vesicles, and I we are interested in how this pumping process is going. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 sort of realized by one protein called calcium pump. I see. Now, and, and what, what, what in, in your lecture yesterday, you described how uh, it, when, when this task is undertaken, which is very important for the muscle, you know, many were called, but only one was chosen, <laughs> calcium, oh, yeah, right. basically. Talk a little about that, because uh, calcium ions ha have unique qualities that, that, uh, uh, that make them the one who can do this best. Yeah. Yeah, there are, I sort of uh, made a list of four re properties that makes calcium ions ideal to uh, uh, s such process, such regulation processes. And 
Yeah, but you, it's not so easy to find those <laughs> things in the textbook. So, yeah, it's not the good scientists should consider why calcium. Mm -hmm. But uh, in the textbook, not so easily you can find such descriptions. Mm -hmm. right. But well, one of the characteristics that you talked about yesterday was that on the, th there's a lot of calcium on the surface, right. and then when the calcium goes inside, there's a big multiplier effect. Right. So, so it's, it's very efficient. Yeah, it's very efficient. Yeah. And, and also, uh, yeah, the calcium has, yeah, the, the size of the ion and the size and the charge of the ion is actually quite important. And that sort of determines many other properties. Um, but the basic is the size and charges and the availability, of course. Mm -hmm. if, if that uh, particular ion is very small in nature, then you, you cannot really use it for uh, sort of daily processes, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And and so uh, now in in um, moving in this direction, so we we now moved to another area beyond the technical, mm -hmm. but but it's really one's uh, ability through physics and biology to move forward in understanding the process that that's really critical for this this uh, uh, activity that makes life what it is. So, so in a way, uh, you're, you really have to bring your knowledge of physics and biology to bear. So it's a good thing your brother was a doctor and uh, got <laughs> yeah, you possible. interested yeah, in, uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, I was sort of surprised after sort of solving the first structure. I have to learn so much mm -hmm. because it's, uh, I was sort of trained as a physicist, but I really needed to know about how the, ions are sort of uh, controlled. Uh, so I needed uh, inorganic chemistry. Mm -hmm. And the reaction is, of course, a uh, chemical reaction. I didn't know how, how it really done. Mm -hmm. So the knowledge of uh, organic chemistry and <laughs> other, other things. Well, so you have to, of course, you have to know how to solve the structure. And the, so the computer things and biological, and you have also you have to sort of know how it really works uh, in terms of the chemistry. So chemistry, including inorganic chemistry, organic chemistry, and physiology, <laughs> and so many things. Well, that's a real protein like that. So you need to know a lot. And, and uh, how does this come about in your lab? In other words, it sounds like that in addition to all that you know, there, there's just a lot of collaboration and new information coming out, you know, in all of those fields. So, so in a way, you, you have to be a filter as you're moving forward mm -hmm. with adapting the technology and understanding the problem you want to focus with. You're, you're, you know, the, all of these sciences are really changing in knowledge that's coming from elsewhere. Yeah. So, so it, I, a collaboration must be really important. Yeah, of course. And particular important thing for me was to sort of, uh, yeah, what do you say? Uh, I was a professor, mm -hmm. and I have a sort of chance to hire associate professor or assistant professor. Mm -hmm. And I was trained as an electron microscopist, so I'm not the expert on X-ray crystal, for example. So mm -hmm. the first thing I did was to hire a very good young uh, scientist as a young X-ray crystallographer as an assistant professor. Mm -hmm. Then I learned from him, and I could do myself. And the next thing, so, so he moved to uh, other university. So I hired the other person and who is a specialist of uh, uh, computer simulations. So I learned from him how to do it and mm -hmm. how I should think. Um, so that's quite important. Mm -hmm. And because I wanted to acquire those skills to myself, so everyday collaboration or everyday interaction is very important. Mm -hmm. So uh, my laboratory is, in a way, it's unique <laughs> because sort of I try to hire people with uh, different disciplines. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, it's it's uh, that's an unusual sort of level. It's it's yeah. intellectually uh, uh, challenging, and and what makes this fascinating is as you're going forward and grappling with these problems, you you are essentially creating a new field. I guess. Yeah, is I it? hope so. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, yeah, it's turned out to be so, and you have to know the sort of limitation and what what really does. Uh, the I mean, for example. Uh, the sim computer simulation can do very li actual limited things, and it's still a very incomplete stage. But people don't tell you because uh, because they try to sort of uh, appear you, uh, but they didn't tell you about things about the, the current technology. So you have to know yourself. So this go this <laughs> goes back to what you said. In other words, that that there are real limits. To what you can you can do uh, with one piece, mm -hmm. basically there mm -hmm. there are limits to uh, the electro micro electron microscope for what uh, you want to do. So I guess uh, th this suggests to me that you have to be courageous in a way. I I in addition to having the capacity to comprehend all these fields, and actually you you have to be courageous enough to say. I don't know enough that I've got to learn from this person who's, who's yeah. my junior associate. Right. You should. <laughs> yeah. But, that, but it, that's do, a best way to run. Yeah. yeah. But, but is, it, is, it, uh, is it a question, is courage involved here? I mean, is it that you're off working on this and, and nobody really knows what you're doing? But because you're not really, are you challenging people or are you just moving everybody forward? So do you have to be courageous is the question. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so the problem is so uh, I sort of attacking is nobody has done it, right? Yeah. So uh, you have to sort of hire young, ambitious <laughs> scientists mm -hmm. if they know too much about uh, the sort of uh, limitation and uh, yeah the uh. technology. Then they may not sort of interested in. Right. So it's quite good to, uh, important to hire young ones and to collaborate with them and absorb the knowledge from them. Now, what does this tell us about what, how we should be tr thinking about training scientists? Mm -hmm. In other words, how do you, you uh, th there's a contradiction here. One is you have to know one field very well. Mm -hmm. You have to have all the information about the electron microscope, but on the other hand, you're suggesting you have to break out of that. So, so uh, uh, can can everybody follow your example, or or is this uh, is this where science is going to have to go? Well, um, yeah. Sort of my sort of experience is that uh, uh, chances for doing good science comes in, if, you, if you work hard. Mm -hmm. But uh, you may not be able to accept that chance, or you may not be able to find this is a real chance, and mm -hmm. you should go this way. That to, uh, to make a, a correct decision, I think, you need at least uh, technologically very, uh, no, yeah, you don't much about the technologies. At you least. have to. You, you have, have to. to right? Yeah. Otherwise, you can't do uh, uh, right decision, perhaps. Mm -hmm. You can't make the right decision about where to go next. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So, uh, of course, a good one is uh, always challenging, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, that you have, sort of you have to decide, uh, this one I should take or not, right? Mm -hmm. And so. And you should know, or you should, you should be able to think of how I can approach this problem. Mm -hmm. So you, if you don't know anything about the technology, then you can't really uh, make a decision, right? Or find the right way to approach the problem. Right. So, and, and uh, this is actually important because you're, uh, I th it, it comes up again and again in your work that you're, on the one hand, you're comfortable with the technology and you can see where the technology might go by combining several technologies mm -hmm. right. to enable you to see. Yep. But on the other hand, you have to be on top 
of this problem of muscles and the, the calcium pump, that is, you, 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 you know where you want to take that technology, which you have developed and advanced, and, and apply it to an important problem in the mm -hmm. field? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, of course, <laughs> you always look for good some good uh, or important problem. You, mm -hmm. uh, you may become interested in. Um, but there are many, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, you uh, once you get to some technology, you, uh, you can find an uh, interesting one always, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> if you find an uh, interesting one, it takes time <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> to pursue uh, and explore the real problems. Mm -hmm. For me, I started uh, to work on this protein in 1990, I think, so mm -hmm. nearly 20 years now. Mm -hmm. right? But still, I'm working on only one <laughs> particular protein. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but uh, the sciences has advanced so much, I think, and by t combining many technologies. And to be able to combine things, I think it was very fortunate for me to be trained as a f physicist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, obviously, if you were just a, 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 a technologist who worked with the electron microscope, you you, you could have gone nowhere no, in, in light. Right. What is what is uh, in your lecture? You showed the photograph and images that you ultimately took through these uh, processes. What is the importance of that uh, photograph? I mean, you're you're suddenly seeing the structure. Right. No, no man or woman has done that before. Right. You have an images which you can take over time and almost create, you, you showed a little movie uh -huh. uh, uh, that yeah, you had right. created. So, so where, 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 uh, where does that take science uh, with regard to this particular problem? I mean, what, what, what is important about seeing the structure and the way it changes? Um, yeah, it's, that's a difficult question to answer because it's just, oh, it's uh, uh, really uh, my life here as, mm -hmm. as a scientist. And <coughs> well, what far I can tell is that uh, uh, see, just seeing the structure is not good enough, mm -hmm. right? So uh, I first I saw the first sort of structure in year two thousand, and in the end of uh, the same year, I had another structure, but uh, it's the the, next, the second one is sort of the opposite end of a reaction cycle. Mm -hmm. So I could not understand why that the structure should be, right? Mm -hmm. and <clears throat> but uh, since then, I succeeded to get uh, actually five other uh, structures. Mm -hmm. the within, within the cycle. Within the cycle, like, uh, yeah. right. So finally, so I understood why that uh, the second one should look like that. I see. Right? Uh -huh. so, so then I sort of understood the principle. And uh, sort of, um, I, yeah, it, it really struck me when I saw the, uh, I s understood uh, why the structure like that? Mm -hmm. And <coughs> it's uh, it's so well designed. So the I mentioned that uh, the protein consists of uh, a thousand laminar residues. So the one particular residues may do several things at 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 once, mm -hmm. and it's so designed. Mm. So uh, uh, it's it's. Uh, it, its design is clearly sort of uh, beyond our sort of imagination and our human ability. Mm -hmm. So I suddenly understood that there is a very long time in front of you, right? <laughs> so, so you're seeing a, a great model uh, builder at work, which you can appreciate uh, from your childhood. Oh yeah, right. Uh, but let's let's. In a way, so, but uh, what I understood finally is. Well, in a sense, you have 
you have before you there is a very long time of evolution. I don't know how how many billions of years, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So so, uh, so it, it's a structure that has evolved over time to do a, a very intricate and right. subtle process, right. yeah. and and it's a it's a it's a beautiful mechanism, right. is what you're saying. Yeah. Well, tell us about this moment of creativity mm -hmm. uh, uh, in this process mm -hmm. you just described. I mean, what, what are your feelings when you get the first image, then you have this last image that you can't understand, but then over time you create the intermediary images, and then you, wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. what, what are your feelings? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, so to understand the structure, to seeing the structure or solving the structure may not take too much time. Mm -hmm. But understanding the structure takes really long time. And to write a good paper, and you need time to mm -hmm. see why it, and, uh, what, what this structure really means. And I sort of realized um, so the idea comes from somewhere above. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you are really stuck. And so think, just thinking, and some, sometimes it's just the idea c come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so then that explains very nicely. Because you're seeing the perfection of the model to, to <laughs> you go back to your childhood. I mean, in other words, that, that, that it's, it's a, it's, it's a, a master design mm -hmm. in this little little piece. Does this make you a, a more religious person, or is it just awe, or what, 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 how, how does it affect you personally? Well, that sort of changed my sort of view of my life, <laughs> mm -hmm. because you compare to uh, so long time uh, before you. Your life is not just a, not. Uh, it's like a point, or maybe not not a point mm -hmm. itself. Your it's personal so life, one's personal yeah, life. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I sort of yeah, I so, so, sort of in a kind of shocking idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Your life is so short, but uh, at the same time, um, it, uh, it gives you. Uh, it's a contiguous. Mm -hmm. uh, strain or points, right? Uh, you, other people are living, and <coughs> also uh, you are maybe some somebody succeeds you, and <coughs> so <coughs> and it's I'm just not a single point mm -hmm. right, in my life. It's, so, uh <coughs> but I understood it's it's maybe so short, but uh, maybe maybe become a good point for other points, mm -hmm. right? So. So I wanted to, uh, yeah, to sort of make that my point a uh, bit useful to other other people. Mm -hmm. so that that sort of came to my mind. And also, because it's so short, you can't really take to, uh, for example, you, you have your properties. You cannot uh, bring your. Uh, to uh, the successors, for example. And, mm. <clears throat> and so it's really changed. I think it's changed my mind in terms of uh, uh, your view to uh, your life and your sort of, uh, your, how do you say, uh, your view of some values, variable things. Values. Um, yeah, values. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and so there, but it, it sounds to me that the, the insight is inspirational. Right. It inspires you, but but at the same time, you you recognize what a tiny tiny contribution this is if you look at the the whole evolution of right, the the right, structure. Right. Yeah. 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 But. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yes, yeah, it's important. Don't yeah, I don't misunderstand right, yeah. me. I mean, it, it's it's. But but I'm I'm trying to characterize uh, uh, what you just said. So so does it then? But but I guess the the really important point here is that what you've opened up is a way for others to can't continue the process of seeing. Yeah, I think so. And and what what kind of future research does this suggest that we need to do? It, it, are there are there insights here that that suggest to you 
well, a whole new area of research which, which we have to be training people for? Yeah, okay. Uh, so uh, now I have a sort of series of uh, structures I sort of understood roughly how it really works. But uh, uh, <clears throat> um, if you consider the, in terms of energy, uh, it, uh, it's not uh, easy to understand. And I did not explain or actually address the question where the, you know, the energy of ATP goes in the, mm. yesterday's. Uh, so, and I also did not show how the real protein is fluctuating in the real world. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so fluctuating. Mm -hmm. And so and that's, it, it's, it's so-called thermal energy. That means we are living in this temperature, mm -hmm. not at uh, <laughs> zero degrees, for example. And so that's, uh, it seems to be a real energy of, of um, whole of our uh, biological processes. Mm -hmm. and <clears throat> but uh, how it, the protein sort of incorporate those thermal energy into their function is not well understood. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the crystallography is just a snapshot mm -hmm. of its real uh, process. So it's, it's, although we sort of, uh, the, uh, the principle of uh, sort of functions or uh, the sort of tools the protein use to uh, d achieve its function, we sort of understood, I think. Uh, but uh, the more sort of basic principle, how it uses energies, mm -hmm. is still far away from our understanding. Mm -hmm. So I, has, I think I ha uh, have to explore those things, mm -hmm. and it requires new technology, certainly. Mm -hmm. And and then again the, the 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 answer to the puzzle might be by seeing because what you will see is a change in structures mm -hmm. but but you don't know what that is at this point. Not yet. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how, how would you advise students to prepare for a future in science focusing on these kind of problems? Uh, 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 yeah, I think. Uh, uh, it's qu quite important to think about how the the machine you use is uh, works. For mm -hmm. example, uh, why is uh, the sort of a start point of the, all the sciences? Right? Mm -hmm. Now, the, by the machine, you are referring to the technology, or yeah, to for the, example, yeah. Uh, you have to measure the concentration of proteins in in your solution test tube, mm -hmm. and the people usually do is just put it mm -hmm. and get uh, the number. So <laughs> that's all, mm -hmm. right? But um, uh, mm -hmm. you have to think what kind of mechanism or principle it you are used and what kind of uh, electronic devices changes its signal to number. So uh, to understand or mm -hmm. to ex explore, uh, expand you are sort of knowledge to a, to a new field, you have to sort of understand uh, quite basic things mm -hmm. and principles, mm -hmm. right? So, so what, what you're really saying is, is theoretical uh, physics or theoretical uh, biology isn't enough, that, that uh, you have to go forward uh, having the capacity to uh, understand how the technology works, right. how it is engineered, so it can be re-engineered to advance the theoretical sciences. Right, he definitely. Yeah. That yeah. kind of thing. So, so <laughs> what, what's the what's the way to prepare to do that? Build model planes? <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> quite possible. <laughs> That's a very good thing. <laughs> uh, and. Uh, uh, where, what, 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 what do you see as being the next major advance in, in these sciences? That is, you know, understanding, is it what you just said, understanding where the energy goes and how that yeah, works? Well, yeah, that's one thing, and the people want to know, <laughs> huh, yeah. And, well, the ad advance in the biology field is so, so, uh, so, yeah, so far, so I couldn't really sort of tell, but, uh, to in, in my sort of narrow field of science, yes, that's the uh, next thing. To, 
Yeah. And also, uh, to I understood that uh, to good science, you have to do some sort of systematic studies. If you look at only one thing, it, it's it's maybe too narrow-minded. Mm -hmm. So if you consider something uh, related, it gives you the correct answer. It's, uh, it happens many times, actually. Mm -hmm. And so, <coughs> anyway, you have to look a bit wider than your sort of mm. your current interest. And mm. also, uh, <coughs> uh, yeah, syst for, yeah, okay, and in crystallization experiment, for example, I found that uh, you have to sort of explore a bit wider than uh, sort of normal ones, and there they find FOIAR is the optimum, for example. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so it's the systematically uh, scan the conditions, and so the systematic study is quite important. It's a kind of logical thinking, right? Mm -hmm. And also look at uh, other things. Then the information from there uh, may sort of help you to consider in the right directions. Um, so yeah, two things, yeah. But it's it, that means you have to work very hard. <laughs> and, and and I, I think you you're you're really emphasizing an interdisciplinary perspective. Right. But then, but let's go back to your literature and and so on. You you know and your your philosophic uh, uh, background. That's right. also important because also, yeah, you, then you will be able thinking. to appreciate what you've done. Yeah. Yeah. Also, yeah, logical for logical thinking. Yeah, it's quite important uh, to to me. Well, uh, uh, I want to thank you uh, very much, Professor, for uh, joining us and, and uh, accepting our limited knowledge as we no, <laughs> explored no, no, no. Uh, this, this very exciting field that you're developing. Thank you very much for thank joining us. Thank you. And thank you very much for joining us for this conversation with history.